In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a casing layer and more importantly, why you should be using one if you're growing mushrooms at home. If you're trying to grow mushrooms or learn mushroom cultivation, check out the link down below. The Sterile Technique Handbook will take you from being a beginner to being someone who's consistently growing mushrooms. I've been getting some really good feedback on it so far, so just have a look and see if that's something you would be willing to read. A lot of people hear the term casing layer and assume it's some advanced technique only used by commercial growers, but honestly, if the species you're growing responds well to a casing layer, almost everyone should be using one. Here's an example of a flush of black pearl king oyster mushrooms without a casing layer. As you can see, I managed to grow one decent sized mushroom, it's fine, but when you cook it, it's basically just one portion of food. Now compare that to these blocks grown in exactly the same conditions but with a casing layer. The difference is obvious, you get a much more robust flush and way more yield. The casing layer helps to maintain moisture encouraging even pin development and ultimately leads to a much better harvest. So what is a casing layer? A casing layer is a moisture rich, well aerated layer that is applied to the top of a fully colonized mushroom substrate. It creates a high humidity environment with plenty of fresh air exchange and very few nutrients. This signals to the mycelium that it's time to start fruiting, triggering a strong, healthy mushroom flush. Casing layers really make a lot of sense when you think about how mushrooms grow in the wild. Mushrooms are often found amongst leaf litter, long grass or moss, all of which naturally create high humidity environments with good airflow. The casing layer basically replicates those conditions, giving your mushrooms the same signals that they'd get in nature. Now let's get into actually making a casing layer. The basic recipe is a 50-50 mix of peat moss and vermiculite, which you'll then hydrate to field capacity. In this video, I make my casing layer slightly on the wetter side because oyster mushrooms can handle the moisture really well. To make a casing layer, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna take one large cup of peat moss, one large cup of vermiculite, Mix that round until they're evenly distributed, and then I'm going to add one large cup of water. If you need field capacity, maybe do about three quarters of a cup of water, because as I say, mine's a little bit on the wet side. So if you take a handful of casing and you squeeze it and it streams out like this, that means it's probably too wet for field capacity. It should have a few little drops like this. Next, we're going to pasteurize this casing layer and I'm gonna show you a few ways of doing that. First, using freezer bags, using cultivation bags, and lastly, using some polypropylene uh, cereal containers. So just pack your casing layer into whatever vessel you're going to be using for pasteurization. First, if you're using a bag for your casing mix, you'll want to push out as much air as possible and this prevents the bag from floating when we pasteurize it. And an easy trick to do this is just to submerge the bag in water to naturally displace the air and then seal it with either a zip tie or tie a knot in the bag. Or if you're using a freezer bag, you can just close the zip.
And this is how you do it with the zip bags. Um, if you've ever used a sous vide before, you'll probably know how to do this already. All I'm doing here is pushing the bag down and then closing off the zip. And as the water reaches up to the corner, you just seal it off and that gets all of the air out the bag. Next, heat your water on the stove to the upper end of pasteurization temperatures. So that's around 75 to 80 C or 167 or 176 F. Once it reaches this temperature, place the bagged casing layer into the pot, making sure it stays submerged. Weigh it down with a bowl or a plate, then turn the heat off Put the lid on and let the temperatures gradually drop down to the lower end of the pasteurization range, which is around 60 to 65 C or 140 F. That should take about an hour. Another method is using a sous vide, which offers much more precise temperature control. So to do this, you just set the pasteurization temperature range on the sous vide, submerge the casing layer, and then just let it sit in the water for about an hour to two hours. The good thing about this technique is it handles everything automatically, which is super convenient. You can just put your casing layer in, leave it in the water, and then just walk away. You don't have to monitor it at all. If you've got an instant pot, you can also prepare a casing layer in that. Just put it into an old pillowcase and then submerge it in water. And there's either a sous vide button where you can set the temperature or the keep warm setting will also be pasteurization temperatures. Lastly, there's the jar of polypropylene container method. To do this, you place the casing mixer into jars or a heat safe container. Then you want to put it into water, which comes to about a third up the jar, and then just heat the water until the core reaches pasteurization temperatures. So once that thermometer starts beeping, you just turn the heat off. That technique is a little bit more complicated. You'll want to watch this video next if you want to learn how to do that.